Hello and welcome back to London Cycle Routes. Today I'm going to show you how to cycle from Walthamstow in North East London to St Paul's Cathedral in the City of London. This takes about 45 minutes and we're going to do it all on quiet streets and protected cycle lanes. And do remember to hit subscribe if you want to see more routes like this across London because that's what the channel is dedicated to. Right, let's get going. So we're starting outside Walthamstow Central Station and we've crossed the road and we're going straight down St Mary Road past that very nice mural on the left. Now the first section of this ride is all in a low traffic neighbourhood which means you're only going to run into you know, a very uh, limited number of cars. The main way that traffic's been removed through the street from the street is actually here. This bridge over the railway has had bollards put in so cars can't pass through it. Um, that basically means that the only traffic you're going to run into is people visiting their own homes or deliveries, things like that. There's not going to be any motorist route running through the streets and that has the effect of making these streets nice and clear for us. That means that you know we don't actually need any cycle lanes or anything like that. We can just ride on the carriageway and it's still a pleasant ride. And you can see it's good for pedestrians too, you know, you just have people walking in the road and it's uh, generally a much more relaxed atmosphere than if you had drivers kind of using it as a shortcut to avoid the traffic lights on the main road. Now, um, just coming up here, we turn left and then very quickly we turn right again onto Copeland Road. And this is where we're leaving the low traffic neighbourhood. So we're going to be rejoining the main road and that road is Leebridge Road. So this road has got cycle tracks on either side of it and uh, I'd say they're pretty great. They're a little bit narrow in places but they actually run all the way to Hackney which is where we're going next. By the way, one tip for riding on this road, there are actually bike level traffic lights on the cycle path. They usually have a little cycle symbol on them and you should pay attention to those instead of the main traffic lights. Um, they're sometimes slightly different from what's shown on the main traffic lights so either cars will have straight ahead and you'll have to wait so they don't turn across you or they might have a uh, straight head for you and not cars um, just to give you a head start of a traffic or something like that but yeah do keep an eye out for those by the way if you'd wanted to go to Leighton you would just turn off left to any of the lefts here really and it would take you there and it's all low traffic neighbourhoods on that other side of the road as well so generally yeah you could pretty much pick any of them and there would be a decent route to where you want to go but that's not where we're going today we're going straight on to Hackney as with all my videos, by the way, if you are the sort of person who likes to use a map when you're cycling, you can find a link to a map in the description of the video. It's on a website called Komoot and you can either download GPS files there or they also have their own app and you can just load it on there. One nice thing about this road, by the way, you might have noticed is that the council Waltham Forest has actually built what they call continuous footway over the side roads. So if you're looking down on the left here, yeah, you can see that the tiling of the pavement actually continues across the side roads. And that makes it a lot nicer for pedestrians to walk down here too. And also, crucially, the cycle track is also continuous across side roads because often on a lot of older designs, the cycle track will just give way halfway, which, um, you know, that's no good. It's actually quite dangerous because it means that, you know, people, either cycles will continue across it and get clipped by cars or whatever. But no, this one's great. It's, it's very well designed. Just coming up on our right, by the way, is Leebridge Station. That's actually a very old station, but it was um, it had no passenger service for a long time during the 20th century. It was actually reopened in about 2005, I think. And you can get a train there down to Stratford or a train up to Bishop Stortford. Also coming up on our right is the Lee Valley Riding Centre, so you can actually learn to ride a horse here. So that's about a 30 minute cycle from the City of London, so yeah, it's pretty central, but it's actually not the most central riding school in London. If you've watched my uh, Kensington to Paddington video, you'll know that there's actually a riding school in Hyde Park as well, which I believe is the most central. I don't know if this is the second most central or whatever, but it's here, and if you ever want to ride a horse, then... Now, there's a short section here just going over the Lee Bridge itself on Painted Cycleway. You could have actually crossed the road there and used the two-directional cycle track on the other side of the road, but I don't think it's worth it. There's, you know, it's only a couple of seconds on the road. Um, and now we've turned off left here, and we turned off, and we're going down Hillstow Street, right towards Millfields Park in Hackney. So we've gone all the way from Walthamstow to Hackney now. So you know, that's uh, that's a pretty long way, and we've done it all on protected cycleways so far. But our final destination is the City of London, so I'm going to show you how to get there. Now, um, in the park, remember that you're sharing this space with pedestrians, so don't go too fast and don't pass anybody too closely or anything like that but unlike in some parks this is actually a pretty nice wide path so you shouldn't really have any problems on maybe except maybe on the sunniest of days now we're crossing at a cycle crossing here and do watch out for that white Prius which just casually um, ran a red light almost into us so that was a bit weird 
and we're now cycling up Powerscroft Road. This is a slight hill, um, it's not exactly a mountain, but you know you're going to have to pedal to get up it. And I should also mention that it does have a bus route on it, so this is probably the busiest road on the route, but it's not really a big deal. Um, you should be alright. Since we left Millfields Park, we've actually started following a Transport for London signed route called Quiet Way 2. And the way we're following that is we're following little symbols on the road that say Q2. So there's one that tells us to turn right down here. And there's a sort of weird contraflow cycle lane here because this, this street is normally one way for cars. But we're allowed to go in the opposite direction. It doesn't offer any protection, but it does let motorists know that there are going to be bikes coming the other way. Um, and we cross this road here at the cycle crossing. And we're in Clapton Passage, which is, I think, quite a nice picturesque passage. And it, wouldn't it be nice if a lot more sort of narrow streets were just sort of paved like that, rather than um, rather than with parked cars and, and motor traffic, so that you could step out of your door and you know just come out onto a nice pedestrian area. There's another cycle crossing here, and we're going to join this path, which takes us round the back of St John at Hackney Church. This path is actually shared with pedestrians as well, and it's pretty narrow, so just be really careful when you go. Um, there are actually little mini speed bumps on it to sort of deter you from racing it down, and I would also deter you from racing it down. The reason we're going down here is essentially to avoid Mare Street, which can get quite busy on the other side of the church. But we're still following the Q2 symbols here. This section of the route, just like the church path, is essentially an avoiding route for Mare Street. It's going to take us through to London Fields without having to go on a busy road. Um, Mare Street could probably do with some proper protected cycle tracks, but the council hasn't really put them in yet. So for now, this is definitely the best way to go. There are also a lot of twists and turns on this section of the route, so do make sure you're following the arrow. So yeah, this one tells us to turn off to the right here. That was quite easy to miss. And I think there's also another one in a second here where I actually did miss it and had to go back and if you watch the cut in the video there yep you'll see that I did have to film that again even though I've done the route before so you know it's possible that you might miss it there's a car parked on a double yellow line but that won't bother us too much we're actually coming up to an interesting cycle crossing here after following all the twists and turns there's actually a little protected waiting area in the middle of the road here with these little poles and I if you have an, if you're coming in the opposite direction, it's actually very useful because if there's traffic and you need to turn right, you can wait without you know feeling like there's cars whizzing past you and you're unprotected. Um, I think that's often a big problem with turning right on main roads, so I'd like to see more of those definitely. Now we go down Martello Street, which I think is a really nice name for a road, and we're going to go on to London Fields here. This whole path is shared with pedestrians, but it's got a line down the middle of it, and bikes are supposed to be on the left-hand side, and pedestrians are supposed to be on the right-hand side. However, in practice, on all but the most quiet days, that doesn't happen and you'll almost always find someone walking or dawdling in the cycle lane just like there. And honestly, you can ring your bell but they're probably not going to get out of the way because they've probably had it wrong many times. Now we go over the cycle crossing here and we go on to Broadway Market. Um, if you've been to Broadway Market recently, you'll have seen that the councils actually removed through traffic from it. We went through those little metal metallic bollards at the beginning, which has made it a lot nicer. There's a lot of people walking in the road. It used to actually be a surprisingly busy road and used as a cut through for motorists. You might still see some vehicles on it, people from the market, you know, coming and dropping off their wares and stuff like that. But yeah, it's actually a nice place to ride now. And that's created a pretty continuous route the way we're going. We're going down Pritchard's Roads and we're going to connect to a road called Goldsmith Road in a second. This road has actually had its through traffic removed as well. You might have seen we went through some planters just a second ago. And up in a second, Goldsmith's Road is probably the most classic traffic free street in Hackney. The council is actually complete. Here we go. We're going through another set of bollards. Now, it's not just a set of bollards at one end of the street. They've actually got a set of bollards at the other end of the street as well. So the traffic has been completely removed from the street. It's not even through traffic. Now, don't miss this turning off to the right. We're going on this little cycle path alongside Hackney Road. And then we cross the road here at another set of cycle level signals. And this is going to take us through to Columbia Road, where the flower market usually is. Now this street's got an interesting design, it has cobbles on it but to cater for cycling which doesn't really work on cobbles the council has actually put these little strips of um, not cobbled alongside the cobbles so you know you can ride down that or there was actually a bloke running on it which was kind of annoying for us we had to overtake him by going on the cobbles but yeah we just keep going through here and this is another low traffic area 
And I should probably point out that we're actually following Quiet Way 13 now rather than Quiet Way 5. That changed at London Fields where the two routes overlapped. But we're not going to be following that for too long either. So, you know, that's not that useful. But make sure you follow the arrows. Just a reminder that if you want to see more routes like this, then do make sure you subscribe to the channel because, you know, this video is just one of many and the channel is dedicated to showing you how to get around London quickly, safely and pleasantly on routes that are only on back streets or protected cycle lanes. Now, this street is actually a one-way street for cars, but we're allowed to go on it. You might have seen those little ones in the road back there. That was to designate that there was actually a sort of contraflow cycle lane for us. But, you know, there's not really much traffic on it anyway. Now, here I think is another candidate for one of those nice protected refuges like we saw earlier just before London Fields because there was a right turn there. It was fine for us this time, but if Shoreditch High Street was a little busier, it can get quite busy, then it could have been maybe a little bit intimidating to turn right there. Now we're just going to roll through the back streets of Shoreditch for a little bit longer and that's going to actually take us up to Great Eastern Road which is a large street that goes up to the Old Street Roundabout which is somewhere we want to avoid. Fortunately we don't have to go anywhere near it, we just wait for the cycle crossing here, go across the road and then pull up here. Now you've got two uh, choices of where to go here, we're actually going to go down Paul Street on the left and this is taking us directly towards the City of London. This route is about seven and a half miles in total length and we're nearly done to be honest. We're more or less following the route of a TFL route called Cycle Super Highway 1 but to be honest I wouldn't pay too much attention to that because it only goes for a little bit of where we're actually going and we're not going to stick to it too religiously. Now make sure you go through this little gate here onto Wilson Street. That gate there is to make sure there's no through traffic on this road which makes it a lot easier for us to cycle down here. You're not going to run into very many cars or anything like that. These filters on these streets have actually been here for a while but the, the City of London has actually made quite a few changes to the layout of its streets since the start of the pandemic. So in a second we're going to turn right onto South Place which is just a regular street. But then we're going to turn left onto a road that, you know, a few months ago, well, uh, probably over a year ago now, you probably wouldn't want to cycle on. It's actually Moorgate, which is a, a very large street. But it's now pretty good for cycles. You can see there was just someone just cycling on there, along there. And there, there's people walking in the road and there aren't really many cars. The reason that Moorgate is a lot nicer to cycle on is this that we're going through now. It's actually a bus gate in the middle of it. So that means that only buses and cycles can go through it and that's had the effect of massively quieting down the street and you can see this is a really useful route for us now there's actually protection on the other side you can see there are a few cyclists but we don't need it um, this is taking us to the Bank of England junction where we turn right onto Lothbury and then immediately left onto Old Jewry Street these streets are actually effectively part of one massive low traffic neighbourhood in the middle of the city of London which is making it a lot easier to cycle on. Then we turn right onto Cheapside, which is probably the nicest overhauled street of all. Um, you can see we're coming up to, in the middle of Cheapside here, there is another pretty substantial bus gate, which has got a load of um, plants, it's got some seating and stuff like that here. And I think the city actually wants to turn this into a sort of cultural quarter after people come back to the offices because they recognise that just having a load of finance doesn't really help. But you can see we're actually here. That's St Paul's Cathedral just there. So you can cross the road. So thanks very much for watching that, guys. And, uh, you know, if you enjoyed that, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Here's a map of the route. And, yeah, make sure you say in the comments below if you've got any comments about it or if you'd like to see other routes for me to try and show you how to do. And uh, yeah, thanks very much for watching to the end and see you next time.